Welcome back to the Writer's Block, episode 17. 17. All right, I'm Todd. We got Andy with us, as always. And uh, today, we're talking about writing. But, you know, we don't always have to talk about writing. We could talk about other things. But you have to let us know in the comments down below. If you have a, a topic or a, a question, we can address it on air just for you. But we have to know about what you want to know. And the only way that can happen is if you leave a comment. So you should definitely do that. But in the meantime, we have other questions that we're going to answer. And uh, I think they're going to be kind of interesting, actually. But here's kind of like a, a, a quick one. Does writing energize or exhaust you? I'll let you uh, start on that one. Uh, I would say energize. Like if I can sit, especially with the short story, if I can sit and write for probably a mere amount of time, I feel like good about myself in a way where it, I, I feel, I guess, jolted or if like if I just had a couple cups of coffee. So I would definitely lean towards the energized side, but sometimes I guess it would lean like the other way too. If I can't like with this outline, sometimes I'll be writing and I'm just like, I don't want to do this anymore <laughs> and just stop. Cause then it just kind of like tires me out or, and uh, I don't have the, the motivation or the boost to keep going. So I, I think it's a little of both and it all depends on my, my mindset and if I'm actually creating readable content that I feel is uh, I feel is like good to show other people, even though, cause you know, I do sometimes write for this for myself, but mostly it's for to put on my website. So I guess it depends on the day, but I would definitely lean towards energize. That's for sure. Yeah. I think I would, I kind of would lean a little bit more towards energize, although my hands personally would be quite exhausted by the end of it. I always feel like I have a, uh, what's it called, like corporal tunnel when I'm done typing. Yeah. Because, you know, I kind of go kind of crazy when I'm typing. But uh, yeah, it, it definitely, it's, I don't know, I don't feel like energizing is the right way to describe the, the sensation of, of writing. Sometimes it's more like just invigorating. You feel, it's kind of like a high yeah in a yeah. sense so like when you get compare, into that mode you know where you compare it to like it's all just, to me all the thoughts are just flowing yeah know? so compared to like me when i go to the gym and i you know put up something that for me used to think was heavy and i do it that's kind of like a high so i have like or that or when you hit when people get the runners high when they're like tired like they start to get tired and then they realize like the destination is closer they just something clicks in their head so adrenaline and or something. yeah adrenaline and then they, they keep going so it, it can be compared to that way side note before you continue do you have how do you like do you, you when you type do you have all you know eight fingers on the uh the keyboard at once or do you tap or you have a little of both and do you have to look down oh well, i have i have 10 fingers well but... you don't type with all 10 fingers true i don't think i type with all eight um Honestly, I don't. Now that I think about it, I, I don't watch myself type. I I just kind of uh, I go with the flow. So you don't have to look down to check the no. keys. Okay. I've been, I've been. I think maybe after you've written like, if you when you've written like seventy thousand words or typed out seventy thousand words, it just starts to, you know, well, well, word that like it's like basically over the last few years I've written like books and then also a number of essays for classes. I know this keyboard very well. This keyboard's been with me since the very beginning, which in some ways is kind of gross, but it's, uh, you know, I, do, I just kind of, I know where it's at. Not to say that I don't have mistakes. I notice that I type too fast sometimes and I'll add in extra letters or I'll I don't know if it's maybe the delay from the keyboard because it is a Bluetooth keyboard. So maybe, you know, I, I'll notice it'll be uh, when it should be word space next word, it'll be word first letter of the next word and then space and the rest of it, it'll be kind of a mess. But yeah, I don't even, I don't even look at it. I just kind of 
go. <laughs> but I don't think it was always like that, but I, I can't remember anything. So I was gonna say that's a common theme on this podcast. Uh in my life. Yeah. It's quite tragic. <laughs> I think in we definitely in elementary school we had a computer class and I think we had to learn, we had the, uh, we tried to have to learn how to type without looking down. And at one point they gave us the, uh, it was kind of like a rubber display to put over the keyboard. So you couldn't see the letters. Oh, that's interesting. And we, you know, but your second grade is obviously you're going to cheat. Yeah. Like uh, the teacher is not going to be able to see everybody, even if your classes, I mean, my classroom or probably class was like 25 maybe yeah. you're not going to see all 25 kids at the same time i feel like i cheated a couple times i think i don't know that was a long long time ago but i don't use all eight i have to i'm okay but i sometimes i have to look down to make sure i'm doing yeah i to be honest i think i just use like the you know my main six and then i'll okay. use sometimes i'll use the pinkies for like the shift button or something like that mm -hmm. but, or tab but yeah, primarily it's just these three, but uh, or six, but yeah, it's I, I don't know. I think just knowing where the keys are has just been a natural thing over time. As I say, learned adaptation. Yeah, because I, I will say that I didn't always have that kind of ability, especially like before I started writing or before I, cause, like, before I started typing stuff out. Like I didn't always type out my stories. You know, I used to have them all uh, written out, pen on paper, with my favorite pen in all the whole world, the Pilot D2 07 pen. I've written a lot of stuff with this pen. But, Plus that pen, like well, so, you yeah. replaced the ink. Yeah, yeah. Wow. No, not really. Uh, wow. I've probably got through like hundreds of these. Not really. That's kind of hyperbolic. But I've. Um, yeah, I don't know. Last few years, I've you know, I've trained well, so I need to get a wired keyboard. Though I feel like that would make the output much better, or yeah, better. I think so. I think so. Because like when when you have a Bluetooth keyboard, there's always going to be like a little bit of delay. And, oh you know, yeah. Sometimes things can get yep. mixed up on the uh, in that you know transfer of information so that's that's true because i have a, a bluetooth keyboard for my ipad for when i thought i was gonna like write on a on plane rides and then you realize it's much tougher to focus to try and write on a plane ride yeah especially uh, when you can't remember when, last time I on a plane yeah well especially now with all the the regulations and you they're kind of cramming more people onto flights to try to, because of the shortages and everything. It's not a lot of, there's not a lot of elbow room. <laughs> yeah. People make it, but yeah. I try not to be that person. What's your preferred airline when you're heading up to the Adiron Deer Decks or the South, Adrian South, Decks? <laughs> Southwest. Really? I, I would have taken you as a JetBlue kind of person. You no, know, Southwest because they have direct flights. So you get home in three hours. Tampa to Albany is three hours, Fair enough. maybe two hours and 45 minutes if you get a tailwind. So, Here's a question. How cold is it in your hometown right now? Today, it was negative 15 this morning. Nice. What, what's it going to be on Monday? Because I hear there's a really, really tough cold front coming through. Probably around the same. Probably really? negative 30 with I the wind like chill. Arctic air is supposed to be like yeah. getting pretty far south into the you know. Yeah. So when anybody complains that it's cold here in Florida, they they just don't understand that it's negative twelve. To be fair, forty degrees is still cold. It's just a different it's, kind of cold than negative twenty. It's chilly. It's cold. <laughs> now, granted, if you're saying it's cold and it's sixty something, uh, okay, maybe I can get that. You know, but uh, personally, I could I could live in the sixties. Not the time, but like the you know temperature. That, that's a that's a comfortable. That is comfortable, yeah. But more like seventy two. Like today was comfortable. You could drive with the window down. Yeah, today was quite nice. Did I spend any time of outside? No, but 
it I was spent, nice out. I spent a little bit of time looking outside, but that was about it. Yeah, I didn't. I, I didn't a, have. I had a, have a little bit of school work to do this morning. So. I have to do some school work after this, probably. Yeah. Here's a, a a little plug. If you like anything about sustainability, I recommend this book. It is fascinating. Although I've only read like four chapters, so it might get extremely worse moving forward. But yeah, Anyways. I don't have. I don't have any. I don't have my textbook in front of me, so I can't plug my textbook. So I have a lot of we'll textbooks. move on. <laughs> right, I got more. Let's see what else I got. I got the Utopian Reader. Guess what? It's a book about utopias, and actually, it's got dystopias in it too. But check that out. Contemporary Urban Planning, another fascinating book. Anyways, I <laughs> I don't have any books. I bought a book. I can't reach it. The other day at Sam's Club. Well, to read i have a much like the most important book that everyone must have in their life is hatchet by gary paulson <laughs> uh i can't go too easy without mentioning that guy uh did we mention him last week i don't know about last week but two weeks ago i'm pretty sure we did yeah we did probably but... yeah but sadly he is he's no longer with us same with uh a lot of people i feel like i know Betty White. Yeah, Betty White. Bob Saget. Bag uh, Saget. Meatloaf. Meatloaf died yesterday. Uh, Louis uh, Anderson, if you know who that is. Yep. It's been a rough he, he was 21 the, he days. Was, he was a comedian, right? Yeah. Yeah. Also, was a host of Family Feud at the turn of the century. Yeah. Way before Steve Harvey. What is it? Yeah. I don't I don't really remember him that much, but but I did listen to some meatloaf, and uh, I wonder what the origin story behind meatloaf was. They had him on the news this morning, but I didn't listen to like the background of why he was called himself meatloaf. I don't know. I'm sure there's a good reason for it, but uh, I I actually have uh, his first album on vinyl, uh, "Bad Out of Hell." Oh, that's yeah. That, that's the fame. That's the best one. I think people said. Probably. I mean, I haven't listened to a lot of his music. I just, I like that one song, Paradise by the Dashboard Light. Have you ever heard that one? Uh, no. Paradise by the Dashboard Light. <laughs> uh, I'm not I, a good I, singer. I don't think I have. It's like a nine minute song, eight minute song. It's quite a doozy, but it's a good song. It's like, it, it's a, it's a song that's more of a, a story of, uh, which is weird, but like, it's a story of a guy and girl who are, um, you know, falling in love and all this stuff, and uh, they uh, they're they're like in love at the beginning of the song, but towards the end, not so much. And in the middle of the song, um, he gets married, and he's like, "Oh, yeah, I'll uh, uh, stick with you until the day I die." And then, like, the song goes to like, "Man, I'm wishing for death now because I want to get away from you." It's kind of a it's, it's all over the place. It's a funny song, but. It's also a good song. It's, it's, it, I understand why the album is as well is as successful as it was. It came out like 1977, I think. It's an old album, but hmm. uh, yeah. Also, I think he was on uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show. Have you ever seen that? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, but yeah. Huh? Too many people. Yeah. Yeah, it is a yeah, yeah, it's tough. It is tough. And then I, well, I, so we got a tan. We went off the, on this very long side tangent. Yeah, I don't even know if you're going to. Uh, I don't, don't even know, know how writing is energizing. Or exhausting. Are you going to even remember what your initial take was before I uh, decided to hop in and ask you how you typed? Oh. If you had to look down. <laughs> Oh, I, I probably should have. I probably I probably should have let you like talk all the way through and then asked. Oh, it's fine. I mean, I, I, to be honest, there wasn't a whole lot to say. It was just sometimes it's energizing. It's rarely exhausting, except for my hands because of the typing. But uh, usually, it's it's energizing. Uh, have you have you ever gotten way. Have you ever gotten those, those moments though where you're trying really hard and you just can't produce anything like a quality, and so plenty you just stop? Okay. Oh, plenty of times. Sometimes it's hard to get into it. Sometimes when you finally get into it, it's like 
super late and you have to work the next morning. So you have to yep. cut it there. So that that yep. was me last Friday, I think. It was like starting to get really late, but the juices were flowing. You know, I was, I was, I was you know, typing a lot. Yeah, you know, I, a lot of letters. <laughs> I haven't gotten the juices since I started a ration, the time series, to be honest with you. Well, for me, part of it is just, um, you know, I, I'm kind of, so this, what I'm working on now is that sequel to Fairly Human, which is uh, a world that I've been working with for like six years now. So it's kind of, like, it's, it's, it's like going to a, it's like, let's say, you know, a theme park you visited like years ago and you get to go back to it and kind of explore it again. And, uh, and there's new stuff there and there's new people there. And it's, it's sort of similar like that, I guess. I, I really don't know how to perfectly explain it, but there's a sort of like um, reinvigoration of uh, getting back into that world and making a new story in it. And um, it's energizing, I guess, you know? And, you know, once once you get the gears running, I just, it can pretty much go for as long as you're able to keep the machine powered. But at some point, you're going to reach a point where like, oh, well, um, the ideas are kind of not, not coming as well. And, you know, or it's two in the morning and you have to work in a few hours and you got to just cut it yeah. off. There. Yeah. I will say it is the hardest choice is deciding between whether or not to let that content flow while you're in that moment. Or to just say, no, I need at least six hours of sleep for a job. Like, like really you kind of want to keep going, but you also don't want to be dead the next day. Yeah. Living off of coffee. Yeah. And it, coffee can only do so much, you know? So it's a, it's a give and take, I guess. Yeah. But, yeah. But I guess to wrap it up, I definitely feel definitely the energy. The ener- I mean, maybe we could come up with, a different phrase it's other than energize or a different word but definitely i when i'm in the zone it feels feels really good to be able to produce something of quality yeah it's i don't know what the right word is but there's definitely a better word than energize it's it's like like for a moment you feel like it's like of, a, what would be doing has a purpose like you're yeah in it now I need to try to get back in that. I haven't been reading as much either because the book I was trying to read to try to see if I would wanted to read a new uh, series by a different author just wasn't, just didn't work. So I'm trying a different one from the view of uh, actually a uh, corner. So we're going to, and it's like the newest one in the series. So I'm going to see if I like this and then go back to the beginning. Mm-hmm. One kind of weird thing is, like, I haven't read a fiction book in several months at this point. It's all about nonfiction, you know, either stuff for school or stuff that I want to read on my own that is just nonfiction. And so I'm still writing, like, I'm writing fiction, only reading nonfiction. That's, now it's a weird uh, dynamic, I guess. Of- well, I feel like you're reading nonfiction to help further your fiction. So, like, your storytelling, I guess. Yeah. Which I also feel like I need to do, too. Maybe, like, maybe read this book and then maybe read something of, like, kind of like the equivalent to, like, watching a crime documentary or something. Yeah. But in book form to kind of understand a little bit more and not, like, at night or on my bed, I need to sit and read. Mm Mm-hmm. And maybe take notes or highlight or something. Yeah, one. But, yeah, I try to. Well, I I pretty much read a little bit every single day now. Like tomorrow, I have to read uh, something out of that utopian book. I can't remember exactly what. Something about of the cannibals by Michelle de Montaigne, and then the city of the sun, and then something by Francis Bacon. Uh, some utopian stuff for my class on dystopia. Yeah. Got to know utopia before you know dystopia, I guess. Okay. So Although, that's what utopia came first. Um, I guess so. Technically, I mean, utopia. Um, uh, this the term is coined like five hundred years ago by a guy named Thomas More. Uh, fun fact: I, I feel like I've talked about this before. Maybe I haven't, but like utopia, 
like when you break it down, like you, like it all comes from Greek, but you stands, you means no. And then topia means place. So when you put it together, no place, which was the idea of utopia. It was uh, this fictional land that you, one of that his characters were talking about and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, over time, the meaning came to be known what it is today, which is a sort of ideal place. And then dystopia over time, I think dystopia was mostly, I think, like, I haven't really, we haven't really talked about it yet in this class, but I think dystopia is something that mostly came out of, like, post-World War II, uh, the post-World War II world, where you had, like, the, you know, the recent rise of Hitler, and then, of course, the uh, totalitarian regimes that had been existing in, you know, Germany, as well as in the Soviet Union. Uh, and I think that's where dystopia really kind of came from, because then you all of a sudden had this sort of darkened view of the future. And I think that's something that is also relevant today because a lot of like, you know, when you look at like old images from back in the day, a lot of the people looked forward into this, they saw this grand futuristic world like the Jetsons where you had flying cars and you, or like Futurama where you could just do whatever you, you could take a, a, a human tube and fly to wherever you have to go, whatever I think was called transporter. And uh, but you end up seeing after like, you know, in the wake of the Cold War, the potential for nuclear annihilation, the, the threats of climate change nowadays, and you end up seeing a more dystopian future as, a to, as opposed to utopian, and you start seeing this future that's probably going to be more uh, bleak and uh, not pleasant. And so I think, yeah, I don't know if I was really leading towards a point there, but that's my understanding of the, the terminology. But you, you just shot out a lot of knowledge that we didn't previously had. I had previously had it only because you explained it to me off camera, I think last week. Probably. Or yeah, yeah, I might have been when I talked about it. So, but now but it, all of our thousands of listeners <laughs> every week and viewers understand it now. Yeah, it, I mean, it is an interesting, um, like it's, it's an interesting topic. Like, you know, here's the uh, actual book by Thomas Moore. It's, uh, it's actually a short book. And it's interesting, and uh, it's definitely a product of its time because in this utopia there was slavery, and that was supposed to be a better alternative to what was done at the time, which was uh, I guess like if you just got caught stealing, they were just gonna hang you, and so they're like, well, it, why hang them when you can force them to work for free? That's a better world, but you know, uh, that was also the year fifteen eighteen. I think that's what it was. Yeah, something like that. I, it was it was a little while ago, but uh, yeah, interesting stuff. Yeah, I I don't say I don't even know where this whole thing started from. Before I started uh, this diatribe, <laughs> uh, in fact, I, I did not know that word existed until a couple months ago. It's just one fact. What diatribe? Yeah, when I, I explained mean, it to you, yeah, never heard of it. Uh, really? some words. I just, they just, huh. somehow I missed out on them all my life. That was a, that was a senior year in high school word. Yeah, that was a, you know, when I was twenty six, I first heard it. Well, Cheers! I never stop learning. <laughs> Those are the wisest words that my grandfather ever told me. You would never stop learning. He told me that after I graduated high school. True story. There you go. Yeah. Shout out to my grandfather, <laughs> who probably doesn't know that this exists, but you know. Well, just we're still learning, Grandpa. Yeah. I don't yeah. know his name, so I can't finish uh, my sentence. His name's Michael. Grandpa uh, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah okay. Oh God. Moving on. Uh, I guess uh, anything more you want to add to the energy exhaustion question uh, no want? i th no i think just figure out a different word for energize and <laughs> i think it did i mean it's pretty much all seriousness it hits the nail on the head that you feel euphoric in a way and good about yourself I mean, you when when you're when you're in the zone like i've said it a couple times but mm -hmm. and then you actually produce quality content not just gutter crap yeah because okay. you can write and then, like, you could be kind of in the mood. I've noticed, too, and, like, write and then go back and read. And then it kind of tires you out because you look and you're like, this, you know, 
I just kind of quote unquote wasted 45 minutes writing this when it's all crap. Yeah. I have been there before. So it, I guess it, uh, the bottom line is it all depends on the quality of storytelling you have on the paper that really will either boost your mood or. Yeah. I, lower I think, it. Like almost always, I, I think you can, I can see for my own work, at least when I, ha- when I get more into that mood, the more into that, you know, whatever it is, mm-hmm. the quality of my work, I believe, parallels with it. it yeah, as the mood increases, the quality increases because it's just more. Uh, I, I really don't know how to describe it. It's magical, I guess, but it's uh, more, more better. <laughs> it, it's a it's, it's a high. It's yeah. just like you know, everybody gets them for internally from different doing something different something like, that we're passionate about yeah like like i said the gym for me or if people are running you know if they get the runners high those are the two examples that come out like the top of me mm. maybe even get excited when you cook something for the first time and it comes out you know <laughs> i don't know i made a pancake i mean <laughs> it's like the small things that you wouldn't think of like people usually getting excited over yeah that just like boost your mood for the rest of the day I think, and writing's one of them, unless you're really passionate about writing. And there's a group of us more successful than others, but they're there. This is true. We're working towards that goal one day. One, one day. Hopefully. Hopefully. Well, I guess before we move on to the next topic, shout out to or merch you can buy our t-shirts and sweaters sweaters not hats not but hats everything else i think you can, you can get magnets and stickers and coffee cups i think i don't call me on that but you can get a lot of stuff with this collection of words on it i was gonna wear the sweatshirt today and then i looked at it and said the cat sat on it and it was too too much hair like it didn't just he must have like laid on it for maybe like an hour because there was a lot of hair I said, yeah, that's not going to work. I don't know. Sometimes he likes to go into the closet and lay on my stuff. Yeah. Well, that's like they say, better for it to be cat hair than cat turds. So definitely buy those clothes. Yeah, that's and don't let your cats lay on them. Unless you buy... Hey, actually, correction. Buy a sweater for your cat. As you can see, cats quite enjoy our merch so hey, that is christmas true. is right around the corner get a get a sweater for your cat or valentine's day that's or the new major day. that is a little right. bit closer just a tiny bit but yeah anyways <laughs> moving on uh so the next question is a it's kind of uh i think it's a, a good question for all writers and Certainly, uh, as if you're a writer and you're watching, or if you're if you are r- watching and you were listening, I guess, and you have any kind of input on any of these questions, feel free to throw the comments down below as well. We always love to hear your comments. Anyways, the question: Does does writing energize? Now, does a story need an antagonist? And let's say you know you do need an antagonist. Can that antagonist be non-human? So, like, does you like, do you need an antagonist to have a story? Does that antagonist have to be a person? What are your hmm. thoughts, Mister well, Nada? My novel for like, if my novel, yes, obviously, <laughs> and it's both. There's an antagonist, and she's a human being. But going stemming away from that and going back to my time series, there's an antagonist, but it's not a human. Would you describe the antagonist in those series to be the main character themselves? Perhaps like they're the way that they. It's it's think. either the the main character itself or it's definitely time. It defi- it's definitely 
um, it it may not be the main character, but it's just it's the second. It's like right there. It's on the the, the doorstep to be the main character because obviously I feel like the main character is the person reading it. You oh, know yeah, the, yeah. the the you factor is in there. Yeah. And then when you when you switch switch perspectives, that's a secondary character. Like a it does it it plays a pivotal role, obviously, but it's not it's not it's it's not as important. Um but I would say, man, that's tough. Because it's close there's definitely the antagonist is I feel like emotion and a certain want. I'm trying not to give stuff away in case people haven't read it. <laughs> For that emotion or that thought process that's connected with them, I think the thought process might be the antagonist. Yeah, it could just be like spoiler alert, and then spoiler just alert, go ham. <laughs> well, spoiler alert, you die at the end. Really? Yeah. Spoiler alert. But anyway, <laughs> up to that point. It could either be the emotion itself or the the scenario that's driving the emotion that's the antagonist. Because, spoiler alert, you kind of put this emotion, like the way you're feeling, onto yourself in a way. If I've written it properly, that's how you're supposed to feel and understand. Yeah. But, um, man, that's tough. I mean, what what would what would you th- well? Okay, go into your own writings first, and then we can come back to how you see is my time series like with an antagonist of because clearly it's not. I don't think it's a human, but there's an antagonist there. Oh yeah, yeah. So, um, so like you want me to talk about just how I've applied this in my previous yeah books? yeah. Uh, so, for fairly human, my first book and the sequels, there was always a a human antagonist. Or at least a physical antagonist, I guess. Like for, for the first book uh, and the second book too, there is always like one like central figure that they were kind of working against. You know, for the first book, it was the governor, and then but there were also there was the a secondary antagonist, which would be the the zombies. You know, and you know, there there are a handful of secondary antagonists, but there was there's always like a physical antagonist. But then for the book, I don't think I have it here um actually i didn't put this well let's fix it there the book i did call the enigmatic martisan it was about this dude who was trying to like come to terms with his own sexuality and so for that character his antagonist was his own like mental i guess perception of the world he had to like get over his own mental hurdles in order to like I don't want to say when, but in order to like, for the, the story was trying to come over the, it was basically the story was trying to get over the, his own preconceived notions about things and to get over his perceived worldview, I guess. I don't know if I'm making that any sense out of this, but like, it was more of an internal antagonist, you know, just okay. fighting against himself, sort of. And then, yeah, so two very different usages of uh, an antagonist. In a, in a book but yeah one you know i think both are fun to work with because like 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 for your series you know time like when the antagonist isn't as clear as this bad guy that it's mm-hmm. it's more of an interesting story because you have a yeah. lot more going on underneath and everything it, it, and it kind of it it makes you try to makes the reader anyway try to figure it out you know figure out what what's at stake really what's the problem is i know irrational the first story in that series you and a couple other people gave me all these ideas of what this person was going through spoiler alert they're drunk in a house crying spoiler (laughs) (laughs) but it's uh an empty house anyway but um that changes everything it was it was interesting to see like everybody's different ideas and then when i th- threw it out there what it actual was and they're like oh now i can see see i like now i can understand that and it, it, it kind of 
grew from there when I continued the series forward. People kind of understood where like the path it was going to until like the ending, obviously. I don't think anybody saw that coming. I just kind of made it up on the fly, but <laughs> um oh, you yeah. so I'm still like at a crossroads between if it's the emotion or the it probably is emotion, but I would say is the antagonist. Or previous regret. Would yeah. you consider regret? Un- well, regret is not really an emotion, um, but um, I feel, like, but regret, I think now talking it out is the antagonist in that yeah. story. Or like, I mean, maybe not That's regret so much as just like his past self. Like he's kind of like fighting against his former self and yeah. the choices his former self made. And he's that you fighting- made. Yeah, and uh, and also like fighting the consequences, and so it's it's I think it's a lot of it like that. Yeah, yeah. But I, I do think they're like when you, like stories that invoke that sort of like if you just call it emotional uh, antagonism, I guess. Yeah. Uh, when you, when that's like what you're up against, I'm like I think it's more relatable to people, you know, because it's like oh yeah, I've, you know, been in situations like that, as opposed yeah. to you know, oh that's a bad guy and that that bad guy did bad stuff and. We got to beat the bad guys so that you know the good guys can win. That's yeah. It's like, it, can make, it can be a good story, but like it's harder to connect to it. I think. Um, yeah, you're, I don't unless a, you know a serial serial murder ends up reading my story. I don't think a lot of people are going to connect to dumping bodies into a lake with cement blocks. Spoiler alert. Yeah. It would be interesting if you if you got a fan base of serial killers who just thought, you know, this guy knows what he's doing. Yeah, we're gonna take this guy's advice. Andy guy knows how to really dispose of a body. <laughs> he was taught at a young age. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, oh god. Um, yeah, I think okay, that flavor, and it. And I think that's the overall antagonist or antagonist in that. But I think could you say there's also antagonists in each story? I don't like to make this all about like my stories but i'm just thinking out loud like could you say there's a different antagonist with this or i think it's yeah yeah except like even uh, yeah i think it's pretty much the same and it's even with the when you switch point of views yeah i think it's still the same but you're not as it's not as intensified because it's coming from the person it's from the person that uh you are originally like talking about or trying to go see Spoiler but, alert. But I think even a in lot that, of spoiler alerts today. <laughs> I think even in that story, like the antagonist is still the guy's previous self, the guy's yeah. previous actions and the yeah. consequences that have since been born in the wake of those choices. And so but I think here, here's an interesting question. Now, so outside of uh, an individual person or a, a being like a zombie or you know killer sharks and outside of emotion what are other types of antagonists have you noticed that are out there in other books for example or in other stories? um you know like like for example um uh, well i guess for yours your climate your dystopia series you could say the climate is the antagonist because it's it's fighting against it's not technically fighting against but it's it's acting in a an antagonistic sense towards the main characters they're trying to save you know they're trying to they're trying to defeat this climate change so they can go back to having a normal life so in a sense climate change could be one of them yeah i would say for that book definitely uh climate change is uh uh it's I don't know if there's like necessarily one antagonist in that book, but it's definitely one of the secondary antagonists, at least, you know, because like there's, there's the change itself. And then there's the people that, ha- that help to exacerbate or increase that change, you know, or work against any kind of mitigation efforts. But, but yeah, definitely, you know, like in general, I mean, climate can be, like climate in of itself could be an antagonist. I think that was partially the case even in hatchet you know to bring the book back i mean that uh, how many times did he nearly freeze to death in this book i haven't read this in a long time but i, I mean you know, I, I think you know he, he was when did he, he crashed in like the the arctic the somewhere? canadian wilderness the canadian wilderness 
Yeah, well, you know about Canada. It's cold up there. It's cold. And then bears. I think it's probably rural Ontario, is, would be my guess. I think. Probably. I don't know if it says, but um, I'm sure it says it in here somewhere. I don't even know if it just said on like the description in the back. Definitely in here somewhere. It says something about Hudson Bay. That's pretty far up north. Hudson Bay. Oh, yeah. Hudson Bay. That's Ontario then. But. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it is. Yeah, lots in your summer, but so you know, but like it was, you know, not just the climate, but um, uh, Mother Nature, you know, bears, yep. you know, uh, the supply of uh, uh, food, you know, like uh, berries or whatever, you know, whatever um, plants you can eat, stuff like that. I, don't know. I can't think of the right words for it, but that that's basically like the antagonist for this book. You know, it's. Uh, but you know, then there's questions of other books, like for this Utopia book. Is there really an like? I mean, I ask you, like, as, I don't think you read this book, but like, I don't, I can't think of the antagonist in this book. I mean, there's, I mean, it's, it's technically a work of fiction. I mean, it is a work of fiction, and it's, uh, it's got, you know, there's there are is debate in the book between different people talking about this place called Utopia, but there really isn't. An antagonist. There is no, you know, uh, bad well, guy I, or bad. I, I guess thing. the antagonist could be the the discussion, the argument of like. So, what are they arguing about to like continue this utopia? Because you say it's no, it's no what? Utopia means no, no, no place, no place. So, yeah. I'm assuming part of it, the argument is like they want to make this a place, and the other part is that they want to keep it a no place sort of thing. All right, so basically, what what it is is this this guy who uh, he's he's been on a ship, or he's I think he's been on a ship. He's been sailing around, whatever. Uh, he ended up in this place, Utopia, for a while. I think his name's Raphael. Uh, he ended up on Utopia for a while, for like five years or so, and he observed observed the way they lived, the way that they carried themselves, how their economy worked, how people lived. So you know, and then he went then he left and went back, went back to england and was talking to people there and it was like well this is how you guys do it and it's barbaric and savage but look at how these people do it it's much better and they have better standard of living better health care or for the time anyways you know and better everything it was utopian but the uh the debate itself you know it was like there are people that were like oh yeah that would never work that's ludicrous or whatever i mean you could say maybe the in, the uh, antagonist would be the state of england itself and the way that it was run but that would be a very like i feel like it's a stretch yeah yeah it, 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 it's, it's not like that. you're trying to pull something out of it where it, there's really nothing there possibly but yeah. it, 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 it's hard to say because like in many ways this book is kind of a critique of how well, it's not like it, it's a it's a way, a different way of looking at how to structure society, but it's also a way of criticizing the way that England had been operating at the time, you know, the way that they would just, you know, hang people willy nilly for whatever crime they did, you know, oh, you stole an apple. Well, that's the end of your life, you know, I mean, among other things. It was, I think, I think one of the criticisms was that, you know, nothing good will happen unless, you know, uh, wise people like philosophers basically are in charge you know some uh something that has echoed from i want to say it was uh, uh something that plato said or something like that i can't remember old philosophical philosophical stuff but yeah i don't know i, I can't think of any like major antagonist in utopia that's uh hmm. that's my story well then well then another question is do antagonists only appear in fiction writing or is there nonfiction like uh, other than the obvious like nonfiction if they're going to write a political book yeah so obviously I mean, even in political like regardless of the type of book there could be like it depends on what role the antagonists or the yeah what role is the antagonist supposed to serve in a nonfiction book like it could be for example um I think a nonfiction book I have that. All right. Well, okay. So here's one. 
It's from one of my old classes. There's a book called White Rage. It's about uh, racism and stuff like that. You could say that racism is the antagonist of this book, I guess. But like, it's not in the same traditional sense as a fiction book, you know, not completely. But uh, so I don't really have many. I have a lot of books, but not a lot of them that are worth showing right now. But yeah, um, I, I like also like, I don't know if you can say that all fiction books have antagonists necessarily. Cause like I said, Utopia is a work of fiction. You know, even though it's, it might be considered more. Is it commenting on? Cause it could be itself considered an antagonist if it's commenting on a certain. Yeah, I mean, it political. comments on the state of England. And I think okay, I so, sort of. So, yeah. so technically that book itself is an antagonist. If we're going to go down this rabbit hole. How so? Because, it, it, okay, so it's commenting on the state of England and it's trying, it, it's kind of like the, that, uh, oh, what the heck is that genre called? But the, when they, oh, I can't think of the book when they, this author wrote about the potato famine uh, in Ireland. I think it's Ireland. Don't quote me on that. About a modest proposal. Yeah. <laughs> the, that's like, that's considered an antagonist because it's commenting on the politics of what's going on or the, the issues going on in it's the book itself is considered antagonist, not necessarily could, the author, it, or the author, or okay, the author could be considered the antagonist. But even then, like, could you also say that the antagonist is actually just the famine itself? That could be it too. There, I, I feel like there could be. <laughs> I, I guess know, it depends maybe, on how you interpret it. Yeah, and that's the beauty about reading things. You, there's never yeah. one specific way to interpret something unless it's f fact. Like just, yeah. even then, I don't, I don't know. Nowadays you don't know what's fact from fiction anymore when you read stuff, especially new stuff online. Fair enough. I, I do have to make a quick note. The modest proposal is, uh, I found it to be one of the most fascinating readings in high school. I remember, uh, so when we read it too. We're talking about mama bite. Like, wow, oh, guess what? You know, if uh proper out of food, we, we can just eat babies. Apparently they're <laughs> they don't taste too bad. A little bit of barbecue sauce and we'll have a tasty treat. It was just such a like I mean it was obviously not a legitimate uh proposal, but it was kind disclaimer. Of if you've never read it, it's not a real dis you know proposal. It's a Oh God, I can't think of the term. What is it? Hyperbolic? Kind no. Of... Satire? Satire. That's what it is. Yeah. In a way, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's 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 a fun, it's an interesting read. Like it's kind of funny. I mean, it's it's not funny, it's, but it's yeah. funny. It's it's funny because of how ridiculous it is. But, it's uh, something that would be reported on the Onion if anybody knows what the Onion is. Yeah. Not just a vegetable, but no. Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, we have this huge shortage of food, but we have all these babies, <laughs> you know. And it, it, like in a weird kind of way, I mean, technically they're not wrong. However, you wouldn't actually Cannab propose I was gonna babies. Say, you know, cannibalism is bad. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's yeah, it not recommended. I mean, it, it's, there's something. I don't know exactly what it is, but there's something in. Uh, human in, in the human body that if you eat it as a human also it can cause some kind of like brain disease or something like that i don't remember what it's called but because you know obviously there are people that do eat other people and you can get some, some bad stuff from it rabies so, something like that yeah so, so yeah definitely don't eat human uh unless you do it uh by accident and you know it's some kind of situation kind of like soylent green you know in fact i've been, I've been drinking some soylent so hopefully that's not human but uh it sounds like you're talking about uh soylent green the one with charlton hessen it's an old movie no uh anthony hopkins is in this movie joe dirt no <laughs> Where he, he where he feeds, he's the guy who, 
Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, I know who he is. Yeah, no, Silence of the that's, Lambs is the movie I'm talking oh, about. Oh, that's the movie you're talking about? Yeah, where he feeds where he feeds the um oh yeah, I know what you're talking the, about the cello player or whatever, yeah. like for dinner. <laughs> yeah, or, or what is it? The very last lines of the movie when he's he flies off to Hawaii to, to meet an old friend for dinner, you know. But <laughs> you know, the it's kind of implied that he's gonna eat him. So yeah, he's the dinner, yeah. the old friend. Yeah. yeah. Fun fact, that movie almost inspired me to join the FBI. Real fact, yeah. Uh, it was uh, what's her name? It was uh, the lady in that movie? Oh, god, I haven't seen that movie in years. Spreads, uh, I even seen that movie. I don't really like scary movies, to be honest with you. You consider it scary? I guess it's just a and it's, just, it's considered a thriller, I guess. Yeah, I don't think it's scary. I think of like white noise. You ever seen that movie? No, it's uh, I want to say it's got Michael Keaton in it. I haven't seen it in a while, but. That movie, I remember watching with the lights out. I got scared. That or like the Nightmare... Uh, I don't know. It's a Nightmare on Elm Street. Is that one? Or the House on Elm Street or something? There's, I don't know. There's a Probably bunch of... Nightmare on Elm Street. You thought that was scary? I don't know. I'm just thinking... I, I could be thinking of something that was totally off base, but there is... I don't know. I don't like those types of movies. Like, I'm not going to see the new... Uh, they're coming out with this new uh, movie. What the hell is it called? Scream? Scream? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Jodie Foster. Is that who it is? Jo- oh, yeah. I think it is. Yeah. I knew it. I knew it would come back to me. Quick side note. When, and I think at the early parts of the movie, she's uh, training at Quantico. And I had also previously watched A Tone of the X-Files, which also is a part of the FBI. And I was like, oh, this would be a cool career because television and movies are an accurate representation of what the fbi really is and, you know yeah. but instead i'm doing something else probably urban planning but yeah sounds of the lamps good movie that was a good movie i uh they made sequels to it but i've never seen any of them Mm-mm. i think the the best Anthony Hopkins movie that I've seen is The Edge with Alec Baldwin. That was a good movie. I don't know if you've ever seen that. I don't think so. That's I haven't seen movie. many movies with Anthony, Anthony Hopkins. That's, he was in West Oh, right? uh, I think that was him. Uh, yeah, that that was a good. That was a good movie. That was we we just went on another side tangent. But it, it was nah, that that keeps the the, the listeners engaged. Because they don't know what we're going to talk about next. It always <laughs> yeah. starts with writing, and then we go off onto other tangents, but we circle it back into what we're trying to convey. Yeah, let's say antagonists. <laughs> antagonists. Yeah. Well, what, what would you say? Who would you say, or what would you say is the antagonist in Silence of the Lambs? Ooh. On the surface, obviously, it's Anthony Hopkins, but. I feel like there could be more. I'm drawing a I'm trying I'm drawing a blank on like the, the overall plot. Like obviously I know this guy's killing people. Like Anthony Hopkins is going around killing and eating people. But well, he, he was in in uh a jail cell for most of the movie. There's that other guy. Right? Yeah. Gonna, so it was a copycat yeah. killer, I think. Yeah. So I mean fact, there's um there's a song that they play when uh is that the, the killer's house and the lady's like in the little well at the bottom and the dude's like dancing to some song. I forget the name of the song. It's by a group or this lady called Q Lazarus or something like that. A song played on GTA 4 on the Liberty Rock Radio. Never, never played that game. But or played GTA 4. Good game. Old GTA game now, but good game. GTA 5 is very good too. Yeah. You know. uh, I'm a little biased. Is it I, I I play a lot of the older games and they have a they have a special place in my heart and I like GTA Five but well that's the only GTA that I've actually beaten fully like full all the way through played the whole story mode oh, fair enough. so yeah I've, I've played the full story of everything going back to GTA Three and uh, GTA Three sucks I'm just gonna say that but you know San Andreas great game GTA Four 
also a great game. I have, uh, it's like, I think it was one of the first games I ever got in the PS3 all the way back in those days. But anyways, that song played on that. It's a good song, but I can't remember the name of it, but I know that Q Lazarus was the artist. So one hit wonder, I'm guessing, because I've never heard of any other song by them. And I hadn't heard of them until GTA 4, because even by the time I played GTA 4, I hadn't seen Silence of the Lambs. Gotcha. Of course, you know, GTA 4 is 2008, so, you know, 13-year-old me was just like, I don't care about movies. I want to play video games. <laughs> I want to drive a car around the city and blow stuff up. Yeah. Oh man. Uh, Two thousand eight. What a year. That's that's. Oh my god. That's what. Uh, it's almost fifteen years ago. Yeah. Just think of it. When I first got that game, the financial recession or crash hadn't even happened yet. People were just living the dream, and then it all went downhill. And I think yeah. that's when the uh, miracle on the Hudson happened. It was January two thousand eight. That's the one with uh, when your cat saved the plane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I honestly have no idea about that one. I think so. I don't know, I've seen that movie probably at least a, probably a dozen times. I have not seen it. Yet. That's that's a good movie. That's the movie where the guy's like, "I'm captain now." No. No. Is it uh, a sequel? Yeah, <laughs> it's a sequel. Okay. I think your cat knows that we're talking about him. Probably. Oh. Now it's oh, now it's time to back to bed. This is why he gets up at two AM is because he sleeps all day. And it's five ten and he he sleeps all the way through the afternoon. That's and tough. it's like three AM. Let's time to run around. It's like, no, it's not. <laughs> yeah, well. Cats do be that way. Mm -hmm. They be little shits. Pardon my French. (laughs) I was going to say, you swore more than I have. I think that that word is way worse than what I said about three weeks ago. I'm not going to repeat it on air. Oh, he said like, he said some slur in there or something like that. I did not say a slur. If he said a slur, we would be canceled by now because of YouTube policy. Well, you would have been, you might have been replaced as a co host, right? I might have probably, show, probably uh, solo for a bit. Oh, yeah, because you know, there definitely would have been, there would have yeah, been a suspension there, unpaid suspension. Yes, gotta throw that out there. I guess that's a sign that we should probably wrap it up. <laughs> oh, right, well, folks, thank you for watching and or listening. <laughs> and please subscribe, like, and leave a comment uh follow us on our social medias yeah yeah. links are in the youtube channel page for both our social media as well as our websites you can check out all the stuff that we've uploaded we both have a large library of wonderful short stories to browse and read and And uh check out todd's published novels and a novel well, excuse me novel and a novella yeah yeah novella and, is like the technical term but uh, i don't know it's different it's a short book i don't know if it's fun fact so i think i have it oh it's over here my no it's not there it's somewhere somewhere around here i have a a mess on my desk because i write stuff and i also do homework at the same place I got a book around here somewhere. Anyways, it's really thin. Like I've thought about like just mashing it into the Fairly Human book as like a extended epilogue that's like 80 pages long, but I, oh, here it is. Yeah, so it's kind of a short book, you know, not, not very long. And I think I've mentioned it before. The worst part about this book, no page numbers. Talk about amateur garbage. Ah, uh, we got to work on promoting ourselves a little bit better. Yeah, well, I have actually gone back and done some major formatting overhauls for all of my work over the past. Well, I did it last year, but 
I mean, this, I got this book in 2019. So 2021 was the year that I cleaned up my selection. So if you want to get it, I got that. I got a bunch of other crap. Some of it's not too bad. If you want to read something um, uplifting, I guess check out Rue is the specific story. Uh, Most of my other ones are not that exciting or uplifting i guess time series is definitely not uplifting we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna throw that out there yeah that one uh i have a like a collection of short stories in there somewhere but i don't have anything organized but i I have a a short story series called archer's conundrum which is yeah i don't books are under somewhere uh, it's 11 short stories. I don't think any of them are really like, they're not like depressing or <laughs> not like any of my, I have a, a few sh- recent short stories that are kind of uh, sad, but <laughs> um, those short stories, uh, they are, I actually, I kind of, I, I have been wanting to replicate it because like the genres of these short stories range from like, like you've got futuristic AI androids are like falling in love then you've got this western story then you've got this medieval story then you've got space story like it's all over the place and uh it, it's it was a lot of fun to make fun fact i originally wrote those as scripts for a short film some of them not all of them but i think four or five of them are and that is a good segue for next week episode yes because we did not get to that topic today true True. So that is something to look forward to for next week. Yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll touch on that next week then. Yeah, because that by that point it will be God, it will be February, I think. Yeah, it will. Holy shnikes! The craziest part is that we're leaving this episode with a cliffhanger. You have to return next week to get the answer to all of these potential questions. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> and, yeah, so yeah, you have to come back. Or maybe if you ask nicely in the comments down below, I'll tell you. Just that would be comments. Yeah. But anyways, yeah. I think it's time to probably close up shop. So okay. uh, thank you, as always. Check out our stuff. Do all that stuff. Yeah, you know. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> See you next time. Probably. Have a good weekend, folks. Or good week. Depends on when you're watching. Good week. Yes. Good week. You know, good weekend. Yeah, yeah. Not you know what? This on Have Friday. a good rest of the day. Yeah. Well, what if it's nighttime? Have a good rest of the evening. Have a good morning. Just have, overall, just, just be great. Just be great. Just Whenever be you're great. listening, just, just be great. Is that your answer to everything? Just be great? No. <laughs> no. Well, I guess in that I case. I think we need to sign off now. <laughs> All right. Well, goodbye. Goodbye. See you later.